So this is a coach from Amara 452. Just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van, you've got the drop your wheel hitch and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker, you've got your gas regulator on the bulkhead and the gas pipe work coming to the bottle itself. Next to the bottle, you've got a yellow shut off valve so you can isolate the gas supply uh, from uh, past the regulator to the caravan in uh, to the gas systems on board. On top of the bottle, you've got gas open and gas closed. Gas open is gas on and gas closed is gas off. In the front of the bottle, you've got a reverse thread fitment that goes into the front. You need to turn this pipe work the opposite, or this nut, sorry, the opposite way to a standard bottle lid, for instance, to release the fitting from the van. So, like I said, it is a reverse thread fitting going into the top of the bottle. In the front locker, you've also got your leg winder to stabilise the caravan while you're on site, and you can carry a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles in this locker at any, any time. Coming down the side of the van, you've got your wind down leg, so you've got one on either side of the front in the same location, and I'll just point out the two on the back as we go past them, but there's two coming from the back of the caravan to stabilise the back of the van. You've then got your battery locker. The battery locker, very simple to use, you open it up with the key, and then on one side here you've got the battery, and on the opposite side you've got your mains power lead coming in from the, from the power on site to the caravan. Next up, you have your water pump connection, very simple to use, blue trigger at the back to release it from the side of the caravan, and you can see, and you push it in and lock it into place. Again, the blue trigger needs to be locked in place to hold that pump in position. You've got the water, uh, water filter in here, and you've got your uh, dog shower connection if you'd like to have another uh, the shower connection that goes on the outside of the van. You've then got your Truma heating hot water flow. You need to remove this cover before you ignite anything on gas inside of the van. So this is for your heating and hot water system. I um, would advise you to uh, remove it when you're using electric as well, just so the fluid is removed when you're using it. You've then got your motor mover and wheel nuts. The motor mover and wheel nuts will be demonstrated, or the motor mover will be demonstrated to you in person here on site, and we'll also torque the wheel nuts to the correct setting, so you can see they've been tightened correctly. Coming to the back of the caravan, you've got your two wind down legs on the back of the van, which is there to stabilise it. The back here, you've got your two grey waste pipes. So the fresh water that goes in the side of the caravan at the front needs to come back out somewhere. So you have two bits of grey pipe that go into the larger diameter holes here, and they'll drop down inside the waste master onto the floor at the back of the van. Coming down the door side, you've got the toilet flush tank. You'll open it up with the key, and you'll put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. Then in the bottom, you've got your toilet waste cassette, which again, you'll open this up and I've got the key. So pressing the buttons and you'll open up the cassette. At the bottom of the cassette, you've got a yellow handle that you need to lift up to remove the cassette from the side of the van. The neck here turns out 90 degrees, so you can tip the waste away. The yellow cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you've got a yellow pressure relief button, so when you tip the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. In that cassette, you'll need to put one litre of water and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. You've then got your fridge vents. The fridge vents are very simply there to allow the hot air at the back of the fridge unit and take some cool air in. And behind one of those you'll also find a gas floof when the fridge is running on gas. So essentially you never cover these up while the caravan's been used. You've got a three pin socket to have power out to your awning. Storage for underneath your front seating area. And then your barbecue gas point for if you want to have a barbecue or anything gas related connected on the outside. Coming onto the inside of the caravan now. And the first thing we're going to show you is the main trip switch is for the caravan. So the main consumer unit is just in this cupboard, just down here on the right hand side on the floor. In here you'll find your 240 trip switches, so you've got your lights, water heater and charger, your fridge, fire and sockets, and then your main isolated test switch on the end. Now if you're on site and you hit the test switch, and this blue switch drops down, it means you have got, and, you, and you, if you connect to mains power, should I say, if you hit this test switch. If this main switch drops down, it means you have mains power coming into the caravan from the site you're on to the caravan itself. On the left hand side, you have your 12 volt fuses for the 12 volt systems on board the caravan. And as you can see, they're all individually marked to let you know what each of those is for. First thing you're going to need to do once you've got the main power turned on and you've checked you've got your, all your trip switches turned on is come in the cupboard here 
underneath at the back here and just in this corner you'll see that yellow valve just in front of the camera there that yellow valve needs to be parallel with the floor as it is at the moment to fill the water system up if it's upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat all of the water in the water system on board the van will drain back out onto the floor underneath the van once that valve is flat with the floor you can open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system, as you can see here. And then you'll come over to your main control panel above the door and you'll turn your water pump on, on this switch just here. The red light means the water system is running as you'd expect it to be. Once you've got water running out of all these taps continuously on board the caravan, it means the water system is completely full. And as you can see, the water system gets extremely hot. I've had it on just to warm it up so you can see everything is working as it should. I'll just explain the rest of the control panel above the door now. You've got your master power switch on the end, which you're going to need to have on for all the 12, 12 volt and 240 power to come on inside the caravan. You've got your internal lights for the caravan. You've got your voltmeter for the caravan, which brings up the battery level for the onboard battery. And then you've got your awning light for the outside of the caravan. Once you've got this water system completely full, as we have at the moment, you're going to be able to come to the switches, just to the right of the 240 trip, uh, 240 trip switches, and you're going to be able to start warming the water on board the caravan. So this switch here, on the right hand side, is your electric water heating. So we've got that turned on at the moment, so the water, heat, the water system warms up on the electric. It is a preset temperature around 35 to 40 degrees. On the left hand side here, and obviously this will only work if you've got mains power coming to the caravan. If you're on a site with no mains power, off grid for instance, you can use the gas option on the left hand side. You spin the outer grey dial around to the flame symbol just here. The green light that appears in the back is your pilot light for the gas system. If a red light appears in there as well, then it means it has failed to ignite on gas. If it does ignite on gas and the green light stays lit on its own, you can actually control the water temperature between 30 and 70 degrees. And whatever numbers above the green light here when it is ignited is the temperature the water system is going to warm up to. You would also need to use the gas to boost the water system while you're showering on board the caravan as the electric water heating will not warm the water up quick enough on its own. As you can see that red light is now on in the back of here which it means it's failed to ignite on gas. So that is your water heating on gas and electric. On the opposite side of the caravan, above the fridge and the heater unit, you've got this dial on the wall, which is for your room heating. Now you'll notice down the side here, it's got an off position, 500 watt, 1000 and 2000 watts. What this relates to is the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. So here on site we can run a maximum of 500 watts. So the grey dial here on the outside we've spun around to 500 watts and the green light has appeared to let us know the heating is working. We can then control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the centre here. The higher you go with this number, the hotter the heating will be. If you want to isolate the gas supply, you can spin it back to the off position just here. And if you're wondering how you know what power supply to set this to, you'd ask the site office when you arrive on your holiday and they'll be able to advise you of what setting to set it up to. Once you've got that set, you can then come to the gas options on top of the heater. So to operate the gas heater, you'll spin the dial around the top of the left-hand side the top of the heater, put it between 10 and 9, hold down the gas valve and hit the igniter at the same time. Like I said, you would need to hold this down, so I've only got one hand free. Um, so you'd hit the igniter, and when you, while you're holding this down, or when you're holding this down, eventually you'll see a pilot light in this window at the front. Once the pilot light is lit in there, and it is running as it should, you can then slowly release the gas valve after 5 to 10 seconds if it's been, been ignited, and control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. As you can see back in there, uh, can't quite see where the ignite panel is. I think it's just there we see them lines. That's, that's roughly the angle you'll see the uh, pilot light at when you're operating the heater on gas. On the right hand side, top of the heater, 
you've got your option for blown air heating. Now the dot in the center indicates the heat is gonna come out the front of the heater. The wave symbols here on the left hand side indicate blown air. So the heat will essentially come out the vents around the caravan at the front, a bit like you have in your car. While you are, when you are using the blown air, you can use the fan speed on top to control the speed of the fan um, and the amount of air that's been blown around the caravan. If you go to the A on the right hand side, that is automatic blown air. Essentially then the heater is going to cut in and out with the thermostat on board the caravan. Next thing we go come to is the fridge. So we're going to press the power button on the front of the fridge. The fridge is going to come on. At the moment, it's trying to ignite on gas. If it fails to ignite on gas, the blue light here is going to start flashing to indicate it's failed to ignite. It's also going to bring up a warning, uh, a spanner symbol, and a nine error code on the control panel just here. That just indicates it has failed to ignite. The blue light is the pilot light, like I said, and if it's flashing, it has failed. On the left-hand side top of the fridge, you can use the button here on the left-hand side to change the power source you want to use. So you've got two 40 volt mains, and you can control the fridge temperature on gas or mains with the button on the right-hand side here. You've then got 12 volt mode. 12 volt mode is the power coming from the car to the caravan if you have the right connection on the car or it is wired up correctly. And essentially it will allow the fridge to work as a cool box while you're traveling down the road so the beer and wine gets nice and cold. If you haven't got the right connection on the car for the 12 volt mode, the fridge will not operate on 12 volts from the car and also the battery will not charge from the car either. Microwave, hob, grill and oven all work very much like your household appliances. Um, all gas hob, so that again when you're off grid that will all work off the gas, the same with the hob, uh, the oven and grill. Coming through into the bathroom and the last thing we go through in this particular van is the toilet system. So you've got a pump flush on top of the toilet, so you pump it up and down to flush the toilet. You've got a toilet full indicator light on the top right hand side here which will illuminate red when the toilet waste cassette is completely full. The toilet seat itself turns for your convenience as you can see here. Then below the toilet you have a toilet waste handle. You'll need to have this toilet waste handle open in this position here to allow the waste into the cassette. And when you're not using the toilet we do advise you put it back in the shut position so no smells come back up from the toilet itself. You also need to make sure this is in this position when you are removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan. There is actually one last thing I'm going to show you, sorry. From the front of the van, the pull out bed, all you need to do is, is pull this rail out of the bottom here, just here, pull it out all the way out to the end, and you'll just clip it over that white tab there so that larger section there goes into this area here. And then the cushions will actually make up the mattress itself. So you'll turn these cushions, this part of the cushion, to the outside and upside down. And then you'll drop these outer cushions into the centre to make the centrepiece of your bed up. So that is the coach from Amara 452. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here soon when you collect the caravan. Thank you again from the caravan company. Bye bye.